Good afternoon. Uh, in this video, I want to explain the fact that uh, God's holiness is inflexible. God tells us to do something a certain way, to believe in something, uh, and uh, uh, that's it. There, there's no other options, nothing less and nothing more. If you add or subtract anything, just like the Word of God, if you add or subtract anything from it, God will have nothing to do with it. It's corrupted. And uh, we've gotten in, to, in the evangelistic age of the uh, Laodicean period very sloppy, thinking that God will accept anything as long as the guy is sincere. And uh, therefore we run to any passages and uh, we ignore the fact the requirements of the blood atonement. Just like in the Passover, there had to be blood on the door. God wouldn't pass over. Uh, if, you, if you had no blood on that door, uh, the fact that you were a Jew wasn't going to save you. God was going to kill you that night. You had to have blood on that door. And that's what's required for salvation, the blood atonement. Knowing that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross and then believing in Jesus Christ for your salvation because it, salvation lies in a person. He has eternal life. But again, okay, we go to the Old Testament. The Old Testament teaches us many wonderful things and principles about God. And if you go to 2 Samuel 6, uh, we see, remember the, uh, the fact that the, uh, uh, the Ark of the Covenant had been taken by the Philistines. And now the, uh, the Philistines, after being plagued by the, uh, the Ark, was now being returned to uh, the Jews. And uh, so this is uh, 2 Samuel 6, and they, returned, they, they picked up the uh, Ark. And when they, uh, when they had come to uh, Nacom's uh, threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand uh, to the Ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. Now that's important because the, uh, the, uh, David had placed the Ark of Covenant on a cart. It wasn't supposed to be on a cart. It was supposed to be being carried. Now because of David's mistake, and Uzzah was trying to do a good thing, God killed him. God wasn't concerned about how sincere Uzzah was. He wasn't concerned about anything about uh, he, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, his sincerity or how he felt, anything. Uzzah was not supposed to touch that, that Ark, the, uh, the, the Ark of the Covenant. And it got him killed. And ultimately it was David who got him killed because David did not do the right thing and, and have that Ark ca uh, carried on the shoulders of the Levites, they were supposed to carry that ark. It's not supposed to be on a cart. But all this seemed, uh, seemed unimportant or uh, uh, minute or relatively, uh, well, what, what, what does it matter? I mean, uh, God certainly won't be bad. We put a new cart if we do something a little different. God doesn't make exceptions. God has an inflexible holiness. You either go do it God's way or you're lost. And that's what this, this, was, this story is telling us. Uzzah was a good man, he, and he was trying to do a good thing, stopping the ark from falling off the cart. But it got him killed. Got him killed. God's holiness didn't care how good he was, how sincere he was, what he was trying to do. When you don't do God's way, it's over. And we appeal to the love of God, but the love of God has given us a way to be saved, and the holiness of God will not, uh, will not deviate from that in one bit. You are the, under the blood... And have those sins completely redeemed by the blood, or you're lost. That's why, as King James Bible uh, believers, believing the authority of the King James Bible, we say uh, the modern versions corrupt Colossians 1.14 when they remove the blood. And they give the impression that you can be redeemed without the blood atonement, which is a wrong gospel. That's all it takes. No blood. So there you have there at the uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6. Uh, and the anger of the Lord was kindled, was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. So there you got in 2 Samuel 6 and, uh, uh, 6, 6 and 7, you got the case of Uzzah, a man, a good man, who was trying to do a good thing. But the holiness of God demanded a, a, a certain thing be done in a certain way. And because Uzzah didn't do it the way God wanted it, he made a mistake. That mistake cost him his life, and that was really David's mistake. So you have a lot of evangelists who are out there leading people astray, adding to the gospel or subtracting from the gospel. You've got guys out there just so you can just run to John and claim the promise of eternal life and have no blood, no blood in the, in the atonement, no blood atonement, no faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. 
They're trying, there's two components of salvation. You have to have both. You have to have both and know both. A person who gets saved should know exactly what he's been saved, uh, saved by. He should be able to say, tell a person, I've been saved by the blood atonement that Jesus Christ died for me on the cross, was buried and rose again from the dead, and I'm trusting in that blood atonement to be saved, and I'm believing on the Lord Jesus Christ for my salvation because in Him lies eternal life. That's it. It's not complicated. But everyone wants to get around it and try to avoid the simplicity of the gospel and start either adding something, they had to do something in addition to that, they had to repent of the sins, they had to say a sinner's prayer, they had to walk an aisle, they had to get baptized. They're always trying to add something to the gospel because they don't think it can be enough. If you don't, if, that's just so simple. Or they're trying to subtract from it by saying it's too hard. There's too much in it. But God has made it very clear exactly. Just like in the Old Testament, when he, gives, he gave instructions to do something, he gave exact instructions and there's no deviation from it. The gospel is no different. You deviate it. You deviate from any part of it. And that's what the, the uh, as King James Bible believes. That's why we, so we don't deviate from the King James Bible by removing one comma, anything from it. Because we know it has to be exactly the way God said it to be. And that's why we're exact on it. But when we get to evangelism, the same, King, the same King James Bible believers have no qualm about rejecting the exact requirements for salvation that has to be of all of grace, by faith, nothing added and nothing subtracted. And the content is simply believing in that blood atonement and in the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. You add anything to that, anything, it's a work. I don't care what your semantics are talking about, it's not a work. It's not, you're doing something other than what God told you to do, which was simply to believe. And if you subtract from that, you leave the blood out, and you leave out the fact you're believing on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation in some way, you're lost. You're lost. You're not doing it. Or you're not believing what God told you to believe in. So you got two spectrums going on here today. The worship salvation crowd, the change of life crowd, the uh, repent of your sins crowd, the feel sorry for your sins crowd, the, uh, the do something addition, faith is not enough crowd. And then you've got the other crowd come from the other side saying, well, that, the, the, requiring to believe, actually believe in something, like the blood, or well, you have to just believe in the promise that, God, that Jesus Christ gives eternal life. That is not what the gospel is. That is not what the gospel is. And if you go either way out and then come back and say, well, God's loving God. He'll certain, he'll accept this. He'll accept that. No, he's not. No, he won't. He told you exactly to do, exactly what you need to do to be saved. Believe in his blood atonement, what he did for you on the cross, and believe in him. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is it. Nothing more, nothing less. And the holiness of God would not accept anything more or anything less, no matter how you feel about it. And appealing to the love of God, God gave, uh, from his love, he gave you exactly what you, he told you exactly what you need to, be, to, 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 be, uh, to, to believe in to be saved. And when you deviate from that and you say, well, God will certainly accept this and God will certainly accept that. No, he won't. No, he won't. He will not accept anything. The only thing God is impressed with is the blood of his son the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you believing in his Son for salvation. Amen. Thank you.